Hi, good afternoon. It's Paddy Osborne here, uh, and I'm doing the Market Insights for Friday the 19th of March. And this week, really, what's been happening in the market and what's been the, the point of uh, discussion has really been uh, US interest rates, US yields on the 10-year bonds. So it's basically what happens is the US Treasury, so the, the Fed, they will um, issue bonds. So when the government needs more money, basically they can't cover all of their costs with tax revenues. They will go to the bank and they will get, uh, they will issue bonds. They'll have auctions and they will issue a government bonds. And the, they can have anything from a few days, a few months, all the way up to 30-year bonds. But the 10-year bond is kind of seen as the benchmark and it's used to help traders to identify what uh, the market thinks is going to happen with interest rates in the coming uh, few years. Now, the interesting thing is that the interest rate on the 10-year bond has gone up sharply. In fact, today, uh, early today, it was touching 1.75%. Uh, interest rates in the US are virtually at 0%. So what we can look at is the effect of that and, and how the market uh, looks at it. Now, the other thing that's happened this week is, of course, some central bank meetings. So early in the week, we had the, the sort of the the tail end of the Australian central bank meetings, but the, the big ones really were uh, the Fed, the FOMC meeting on Wednesday, and uh, the UK, the Bank of England on Thursday. But what we're gonna look at here is the Fed. And the key thing is that what people were looking out for is whether or not the Fed was gonna be continuing to be dovish and not looking to extend their interest rates uh, or raise interest rates at all, hike interest rates before 2023. Now, what actually happened is that there's a committee, uh, the FOMC committee, there's a total of 18 votes on the committee, and what they do is they have a, uh, they have a vote um, um, uh, each, each time, each meeting, so six, six seven weeks, uh, each, uh, each six or seven weeks, and they will say, where do you think interest rates are going to be uh, this year, next year, the following year, 2023, and then longer term? And it's called a dot plot. So I want to show you this thing here, which is called the dot plot. This is the dot plot from the 17th, which was the, the date of the meeting. And you can see here, 2020, all 18 dots are down here at 0 0.125, one-eighth of a percent. Okay, so the whole committee agrees that interest rates are not going to move this year. There are four people in the committee that think interest rates are going to go up to a little bit higher, just under, just around half a percent uh, in 2022. And the key thing here is that some additional members of the committee shifted their uh, estimates up for 2023 up from the, the bottom rung there all the way up to uh, ultimately a couple of them there thinking that they're going to go above 1% by 2023. However, the majority of the committee still think that interest rates will not change before 2023. And that was the message that we received on Wednesday night from Jay Powell. And that is why markets... Uh, reacted as they did. Basically, the, the overall tone was dovish, saying we're not going to raise interest rates. We don't mind about inflation. We think it will be brief. Uh, it won't be too high, and we don't mind it. We normally have, uh, of course, the US has a 2% target for inflation. It's, at the moment, it's just a fraction under that, um, and they think it's going to go above that. Traditionally, they would raise interest rates to stop inflation going too high. What Jay Powell and the, and the committee have said in recent months is, we are going to just let inflation run. We don't think it's going to be a major issue. It's not going to fly off the handle and disappear up to 5%, 10%. So if it does go above our target of 2%, we're going to let it go. The, the priority for the moment is getting Americans back into work. There are still 9.5 million Americans that had jobs before COVID that do not have them now. And that is their priority to stimulate the economy with cheap, low interest rates, cheap money that's then going to help people to um, get into jobs and help the, the, the economy to be stimulated uh, to, to recovery, which it's you know, kind of in the process of doing already. Um, one other thing to look at uh, and something that people talk about in the market is the yield curve. So this is also what I want to show you just briefly here. The yield curve is actually the, the interest rate or the yield on each of the treasuries. So you've got the, 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 the curve here goes all the way from the one month uh, maturity bonds that the, the government will issue all the way up to 30 year bonds. Now, 30 years is a little bit long, but that, that tells us in the long term, the estimate is, of course, that interest rates will be up around two and a half percent. If I just go back here, you can see as well, the committee is thinking the same thing. They're thinking in the longer term, interest rates will return to two, two and a half percent, which makes perfect sense. And the, and the financial markets, the bond markets are thinking the same. The 10-year bond is this one here. So when this was taken on the 17th, it was at 1.65%. It has gone up since then to 1.75 and eased off again back to 1.7 this morning. 
Uh, but you can see all the way out to two years, we still have an expectation of interest rates being well below half a percent, so even below a quarter percent. So this lines up with this expectation of, of the, the, this is the committee and this is the actual market. So the market for the moment is pretty much agreeing with the committee. We think interest rates are going to be low. The result in the markets, if I just go here and look at look at what happened in the markets on, on Wednesday, you can see here. So there's a couple of things that actually this affected all markets, not just currencies. Uh, it affected commodities. It also affected um, stock markets. So we'll have a look at all three of those just briefly here. This is a, a chart of euro dollar. It's a one hour chart going back. Uh, just before the beginning of March, we can see euro dollar is in a downtrend. It has been in the downtrend since uh, early early January when we hit a, a high of 123.50. Um, but this is the, a, a decent move come down here from about 122.50 um, at the end of February. We've had a little bit of sideways in the last couple of weeks, but you can see here, we've highlighted here where the FOMC announcement happened and it was a very good, it, well, it wasn't particularly a good thing for um, the euro, it was actually a bad thing for the dollar. So it weakened the dollar because they said we're not going to raise interest rates, which basically means, you know, if, if interest rates go up in a country, the currency in that country will go up because if you buy that currency, you will earn the interest. And if the interest rates are not going to go up in the dollar till at least 2023, which is what the message was, uh, that's not good for the dollar. So the dollar went down and you can see uh, their euro dollar shot up. That is the dollar going down, not the euro going up. Now, Technically, it then hit some resistance at 119.90, which we could see further back here, back in early March, was very good support. It then smashed through this level. The sellers took control. And since then, we've had it here on the 11th uh, and then here on the 17th. And again, it touched on the 18th early in the morning. Uh, this 119.90 level on euro dollar has been quite significant. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a seller of euro dollar. Um, and I think uh, that the chances are fundamentally the, the issue with euro dollar at the moment is that, you know, you got to look at the economies. The US economy is recovering well. Their, their vaccine program is doing extremely well. Um, their stock markets are doing extremely well. And they are, they are, they are, um, uh, even though they're, they're, they're pumping a lot of money, a lot of dollars in to stimulate the market, the market is seeing that as positive for the economy as opposed to flooding the market with dollars. So all in all, the dollar has been has been relatively strong since the beginning of the year. On the other side, you've got Europe, who are, to be honest, having a making a bit of a mess of their uh, vaccination program. We've now got increasing numbers of COVID uh, cases in, in uh, I think, certainly Italy, certainly Germany, quite a few countries, I think it, uh, France as well. Um, I think Paris is locking down this weekend. Italy's gone back into lockdown. Uh, I think the word exponential was used for the German situation. Uh, and also then they had the AstraZeneca uh, situation as well this week where they stopped uh, issuing that. Um, I had my AstraZeneca jab last night uh, and I'm absolutely fine and still alive. So hopefully that's going to be going back. I think the news is this morning that the Europeans are going to restart uh, taking that jab and uh, hopefully that the the their, their vaccination program can get back on track because at the moment the, the problem is that the, the market sees it as as a, a delay in the recovery for the European economy which is going to weigh heavily on the euro so for me any rebound in the euro over the next week or two certainly uh, is an opportunity to sell so I'm currently short and planning for that to, to retest the 118 80 85 level which we saw earlier this week and then the 118 40 level that we saw last week uh, with a view to, to to the market going lower again. Okay, so that's really what we've got for, for today. Keep an eye out for that. I mean, it really is the market is very much focusing on the yield curve uh, and particularly on the 10-year bond. So hopefully that's given a little bit more understanding about what that means and, and what it means for other markets. Uh, before I go, I just do want to just look at a couple of other markets, which I said I would do. Um, and one is gold. So you can see here as well, gold with a weaker dollar. If the dollar's worth less, then you need more dollars to buy an ounce of gold. So it's just pure maths, really. And you can see there that the price of gold went up very sharply uh, as FOMC was announced. And the last one is the S&P. And you can see here again, uh, S&P has already been doing well, but it had been coming off for a couple of days. But then again, same same thing as well. One is that a weak dollar means that uh, you know international uh, companies, so companies in the US that are exporting, uh, if the dollar is slightly weaker, they'll get more dollars when they exchange their pounds or euros or yen into dollars. So that will help their profits. So that's why the market goes up. But also their share price is priced in dollars. And if the dollar is worth a bit less, you need more dollars to, to make the company worth the same on a global scale. So there's a couple of reasons there why, of course, the stock market as well went up 
at the same time as the dollar went down. This was then hitting an all-time high, new all-time high, and nudging its way very, very close to that magic 4,000 level for the S&P. Um, but then it's since uh, come off that, the excitement has waned a little bit, uh, as, as has the dollar re-strengthened, as, of course, what's happened is that the yield has gone up. So the 10-year yield going up to 1.75 tells us that people are expecting the interest rates to go up, even though the, uh, the FOMC is not saying it's going to go up till 2023. The market is telling that 10-year yield going up is saying mm, that's good for the dollar and that's pushing the dollar higher, which is then pushing stock markets lower. Because, of course, if you've got um, you know, a bond market and you can invest in a very safe, uh, you know, risk-free asset like a, a government bond at 2 3 4%, then that will take money out of the stock market. So basically bonds, um, yeah, bond yields and, and equity markets uh, go in opposite directions. And that's what we've seen just in the last couple of days, having seen that boost up to a new record high on the S&P uh, on the back of that news, the dovish news from the Fed. Okay, hopefully that's, uh, that's helped a little bit of understanding of the uh, interest rate situation and the 10-year bond and the way it affects lots of different other markets. Um, have a good weekend, everyone, and we'll catch up again next week.